Mobile Impact 301, How to Raise More Money Via Mobile. We are joined today by two excellent presenters that I know will share a lot of wisdom with you about how to use mobile at your organization to raise money. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup. I've been with the organization for about six years and had spent about a decade before that working in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California with smaller nonprofits where I was often the accidental techie trying to figure out what solutions would work for our organization's needs. So I'm happy to be your host today and hope that I'll be able to facilitate this event to the best solutions for your organization's needs. Also joining us is Karen Stein, and she is with Network for Good as their VP of Communications and Content where she empowers nonprofits and corporate, po corporate partners with the tools they need to advance their good causes. She manages their wealth of nonprofit content and training. So she runs events like this for Network for Good Services. We also have joining us today Tanya Urschel who is with PayPal. And she's been with the organization for over 8 years leading their product and marketing launches for B2B and consumer segments. And she also now works with the nonprofit engagement sector. So she specializes in how to do this for nonprofits. So we're Glad to have them with us today. Also on the back end you'll see Ali Bezdikian who is an interactive events and video producer here at TechSoup. She'll be on hand to help you with any tech problems you might have and to grab your questions. A quick look at today's agenda. We'll do an introduction to TechSoup for those of you who may not already be familiar with us. And we'll talk a little bit about this mobile webinar series that we're running of which this is Part 3. We'll have a quick poll to see where you are at in your organization with mobile activities. And then we'll hand off to Karen to talk a little bit about how we define mobile, what that actually means, and to talk about why mobile is important for fundraising. And then both of them, Tanya and Karen, will take some time to talk about how to engage your donors in mobile activities and to connect with them mobily, and then how to optimize your mobile donation experience. We'll have time for Q&A. Toward the end I'll also spend a couple of minutes just sharing the different mobile programs that are available to nonprofits uh, through TechSoup's donation programs. So if you're not already familiar with TechSoup, we are a 501 working toward the day when every nonprofit, library, and social benefit organization on the planet has access to the knowledge and resources around technology to serve their mission. We've been around since 1987 serving more than 200,000 nonprofit organizations around the world in more than 60 countries. We have a variety of new services available all the time in TechSoup's catalogs. So if you're not familiar, we've recently added consulting services, Windows 8.1, QuickBooks 2014, and more. And you can find all of these things and more by visiting TechSoup.org. So a little bit about the Mobile Impact series. This is Part 3 in a four-part webinar series that we're doing in conjunction with these sponsors, PayPal, Network for Good, Better World Wireless, and TechSoup Global. And the first two webinars covered how to uh, take your cause mobile was the first one. And the second one was focused on digital content and what you do with your content to make it uh, most usable on a mobile platform or for your mobile users. So I'll share links to both of those uh, later on in the program. In addition, uh, we have today's webinar on raising funds via mobile. And then we have another one on July 10th that we'll have a link to later on uh, that's focused on the actual technology. So using tablets in your office and having policies around bringing your own device to work, um, things like that, and what kinds of mobile devices you can leverage for your staff and your office. We've also been supported with this uh, Mobile Impact Series by the following partners, Social Media for Nonprofits, Volunteer Match, Mobile Beacon, N10, the Case Foundation, Foundation Center, and GuideStar. And so all of these organizations have come together recognizing that as a mobile audience continues to grow in our, in our world, that we want to make sure that nonprofits aren't behind the curve and missing out on leveraging mobile for their good causes. So to get an idea of what you are already doing and where you are at on mobile, 
go ahead and take a moment to click on your screen. And this will help give our presenters some background on what your experience already is. So do you already have a responsive platform for your email? so that when somebody opens an email on their phone, it automatically responds to the fact that it is on a mobile device and makes it look good? Do you have a website that is optimized for mobile devices? Have you created your own apps? Do you share QR codes, those little black and white boxes that people can scan with their phones to get more information or get taken to your website? Have you run text to give campaigns? Maybe you haven't done any of the above. And if there is something I'm missing from the list, go ahead and comment in the chat and let us know where you are at with mobile. And this will help give us an idea of your personal and your organizational expertise on this area already. And just so people know, we are you know, assuming this is going to be talking about fundraising, and we are looking at sort of the, the 301 level assumes that you've got some background. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you all have background in the same areas. So that's why we'll be pointing you to those other webinars we've already done, as well as a variety of other mobile resources later on, so that if you're just starting out, that we can point you to those things too. So going to, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the results, but it looks like we have about 45%, so almost half of our audience has said that they aren't doing any of the above which I would venture a guess is pretty typical um, of many nonprofits where mobile is not necessarily and technology is not necessarily your priority, but it certainly can help you reach your priorities. And it looks like about 30%, 32% are already using responsive email design, a little bit less than that having mobile-optimized mobile websites and sharing QR codes. So those are the big areas. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and invite Karen onto the line to talk, a, talk to us a little bit about that initial, how do you raise more money via mobile, and what do we define as mobile for the context of today's webinar. Welcome Karen. We're glad to have you. Thanks so much, Becky. I, on behalf of, of Tanya and myself, I just want to say thanks to, to you and the folks at TechSoup and, and everyone on the line for allowing us to come here today and, and talk a little bit about mobile, why it's important, how you might be able to leverage this for your organization, and, and then to talk a little bit about maybe some of the questions that, that you might have in terms of some of the things that, that Becky asked in, in that survey. I think it's, it's quite fascinating to see who's doing what with mobile. And I think that you know, even though, as Becky mentioned, the, the results are probably very typical, especially for those folks working in small to mid-sized organizations, as I think most of you might be, but I am actually pleasantly surprised that, that there are quite a few of you that are doing some of these things, and I think that's great. And so you should give yourself a big pat on the back because it really means that you're out there really trying to find the best way to connect with those, that, who are, those folks that are supporting you, those people that are you know, really willing and able to give back to your organization. So good job so far, and hopefully we can give you some additional tips to add to your, your toolkit. So today what we want to talk about, Becky went through some of the agenda, but really what we want to think about is, is how do we understand the landscape of mobile. We want to understand why it's important. We want to understand really the, the, the scope and also the trajectory of mobile growth in, in the U.S. and beyond. What, you know, there's one aspect of it that's what's happening now, and then there's this bigger looming aspect of it that's really coming at us very quickly as we see more and more folks going online with their mobile devices, as we see more and more people connecting with each other, communicating with each other, and making all sorts of transactions with their smartphones. So that's one of the things that we'd, we'd like to talk about. And then we want to really talk about how to leverage the opportunity and also how to manage the constraint of mobile to really best connect with those folks. One of those things that you need to do while we talk through this is really recognize where you are in the process about, you know, I think you said around 35 to 40 percent of folks, maybe more on the line, may, may not be doing anything. And I think it's important to recognize where you are in this process. 
and that's going to give you some ideas of, of how to prioritize it moving forward. And so even though you may not be able to take some of these things today and go implement them immediately, they're going to give you some, it's going to give you a nice background to take this back to your staff, to your board, to the folks that you're working with to try to come up with a plan that best suits your organization. So, oh, go ahead. This one. I was just going to say, Sorry, Tanya. I was just going to say that you know, at, at the same time, mobile is really just one piece of that overall digital strategy. And what we want to really encourage everyone here today to think about is, is before you try to dive too deep into mobile, it's really important to make sure you have your online fundraising strategy in general nailed down. So those are things like you know, thinking about how your website is adapted to mobile, thinking about do you already have some type of online donation processing cap capacity whether that's mobile or not. And then what are you doing in terms of your email and outreach, and to think about what your online fundraising goals might be versus your other channels that you might be pursuing. So what, you know, think about what your um, percentage of funds might come from, from online fundraising versus other funding sources and offline channels, grants, and other um, funding that you might have. And so what I'd like to do is pass it on over to, to Tanya, and she's going to talk a little bit about all of the different ways you might be able to connect with mobile and the ones where we feel you might want to focus more uh, directly on. So Tanya? Hi, Karen. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks again for tech, to TechSoup and Better but it will wireless for having us here. Um, I'm going to start with focusing on mobile web, where there's a lot of aspects to, to optimizing and to you know, having that mobile strategy. But we're going to start with mobile web because it's, it's probably the, the, the most important um, part that uh, is going to impact how you, how you fundraise. And what do we mean by mobile web? We mean anytime basically you use your browser on a mobile device to access the Internet, whether it's Safari, Chrome, Firefox, etc. If you view a website on a smartphone or a tablet computer, you're basically using the mobile web. The challenge for nonprofits and, and other organizations is creating an online presence that works well for both mobile devices and computer users, regardless of the screen size or of the keyboard types out there. So mobile web is still, is still the most common and, um, and the easiest medium for people to find information about you. It is also the easiest um, for you to manage and keep updated. Uh, on the downside, there is, is the obvious needing good Internet connection to browse fluently. Also when it comes to payments, entering credit card information can be, can be a challenge on small devices if not optimized properly. So those are sort of the pros and cons of mobile web. So why, why mobile matters for fundraising? And I'm going to let Karen dive a little deeper of, of how, how, what's important for nonprofits and, and why this is really so crucial to, to think about optimizing your mobile web. Thank you, Tanya. So what I'd love to do is dig a little bit. We're going to get into some juicy mobile stats right now, and hopefully these are, are the, the key tweetable moments of, of this webinar. And I know that they shouted out a couple of hashtags and handles at the beginning, so if you are tweeting along with us, please share some of these stats with your community. And that just goes to illustrate how connected our society is and how connected your donors are and how we do have this opportunity to reach um, so many more people not just through our typical online and social media connections, but now we can reach them wherever they are, whenever they might be accessing the Internet. They don't have to be sitting at their desk. They don't have to be at work, or they don't have to you know, take that time out to go check up for a message from you. They could be doing that uh, you know, when they're on the train, or they may be doing that at an event, or they may be doing that when they're waiting in line at the grocery store. And so there's a lot of opportunity um, for you to connect with folks. And the, 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 um, the wealth of, of um, I guess growth that we have and that we see for nonprofits, I think, is, is such a great thing for us because it's really going to allow us to think about connecting with our supporters and donors anytime that we want. And so, really, what we see is that there are more and more devices and more and more opportunity. You know, people are using them in a way that's not just transforming how they communicate and connect with family members and, and coworkers, but it's going to profoundly affect philanthropy just as it's affecting how we, we shop and, and do other transactions like banking. And I know Tanya can talk a little bit more about that later on in the presentation. What I wanted to share though is that 
what we saw last year in 2013 is that the average smartphone usage grew 50%, which is a pretty big jump. And smartphones make the whole idea of the mobile web much easier and much more ubiquitous. So think about how the advent of mobile has really affected your interaction with your coworkers and think about how that's, you know, how many times a day do you check your Twitter or your Facebook or your email and your donors and your supporters are doing just the same thing. So really it's it's a mobile world and I thought this number was was staggering by the end of 2014 the number of mobile connected devices will actually exceed the number of people on earth and I I find that astounding, but it's true. This is um, some data coming out of the Cisco Visual Networking Index, which is a fascinating uh, report that I think comes out about every February. And um, there is a link on the slides. And Becky, I'm assuming that those links will be active when folks can get these downloads. If not, we're happy to pass along some of those URLs. But um, that number is about 7 billion. So by the end of this year, there will be um, 7 billion mobile connected devices on this planet, and that includes smartphones, tablets, and other devices. And so Tanya is going to share a few other stats that talk a little bit more about how that might affect you and your cause. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in, in the U.S., actually, um, the numbers are, are pretty staggering. Um, in the recent studies that we've been, I was looking through um, recently, uh, we, there was a growth of around 58% now of all adults uh, own a smartphone and 42% own a tablet. And this is just growing exponentially, constantly. It's, it's pretty impressive. All of, um, and of, of all those people that have mobile devices, 34% use the devices to, 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 as their main way to uh, browse the, the Internet and browse the web. And I, I suspect that in the coming years this number will multiply as websites are optimized and Internet connectivity improves. Another, another great stat we found is um, it, and basically 31%, 31, sorry, 31.2% of the mobile traffic out there is already um, uh, happening on your site. So basically your, your site is already being viewed by many, many people on, on mobile devices, which means um, you're, you might be losing out on folks um, that you know, get frustrated if your, your site's not optimized, and they're just going to drop off and go somewhere else. And, and we have a lot of partners here at PayPal that integrate PayPal into their fundraising technology, and I've been talking to many of them, and um, most of them now are seeing over 50% of all the campaigns that they have on their platform are being viewed on mobile devices. In fact, just recently I talked to also to someone who, who was seeing up to 65% of the, of the campaigns are being viewed on, on a, uh, either a smartphone or tablet. And what this, this indicates is, is also not only you have to optimize your own website, but when you uh, use a partner, if you start using maybe some of the crowdfunding companies or any other, other tools out there that you might leverage, make sure that those partners half technology that has been optimized because it's really going to create a big impact on additional donations that you can get from that. Here at PayPal we see a lot of data that reveals people's spending behavior. And we've, we've noticed how nonprofits are kind of behind the retail uh, in mobile payments. But nonprofits um, are beginning to catch up. Last year we saw a 204% increase in transactions going through our nonprofits. Uh, we, last year we transacted around $5.7 billion through our nonprofit base. And last year this, the increase of mobile views, of mobile payments were down through, were 7.3% versus the year before, which was 3%. Um, did I say that right? 7% <laughs> last year, 3% the year before. So a um, big increase. And then in particular we saw a huge growth during the holidays. So at the end of the year there was a big push and we saw uh, the transactions going through nonprofits were up to 9.3 percent versus only 4.9 percent in 2012. Now, so the question is, how how do you get donors' attention um, in these mediums as as you um, you present yourself in the different channels? I'm going to let Karen talk a little bit more about how how to engage donors in in this sort of mobile world that we're in now. Thanks so much, Tanya. So one of those ways is really just to recognize how folks are using mobile and, and how they may be experiencing your site 
through mobile. But one of the things that you need to think about when we think about mobile and think about your donors, think about the folks that you're communicating with, it's really to some extent about being courteous to them. If we know that so many people are on their mobile devices and accessing your, your information. It's really a matter of courtesy and respect that you want to offer them to communicate with them on the platforms that they're using. The great thing about this is that mobile really now can underscore one of the wonderful principles of giving. It can really allow people to be generous in the instant that they're inspired to do so. And so it can actually reduce the friction between that wanting to give and then completing the act. So you know, we need to really think about that, that in many cases um, the, the decision to give is often impulsive and spontaneous and driven by an emotional reaction to a message that you've sent, maybe a photo that's really just touched some, someone and they want to give in the moment. And so because it makes it easy to act, mobile is going to be, we feel, a game changer in the world of philanthropy. So just a couple of other things to share to really kind of hit this point home. The average adult in the U.S. spends around 34 hours per month on their smartphone. And I'd love maybe just a couple of folks to shout out in the window if does that sound like you? Are you <laughs> am I talking about you? I know that I'm probably talking about myself here because I do have a bad habit of, of gr reaching for my phone at any given time of the day um, because it just feels like it keeps me connected to all the things that I care about. Um, and then the same thing, <laughs> yeah, Mary says she's guilty. I'm with you, Mary. I, I know. I got your number. Um, so, you know, 60% of consumers over I'm sorry, 66% of consumers over 60 actually open emails on mobile devices as well. And so that's a really interesting stat because I think as we think about mobile and we think about you know, online giving, we think, oh, it's about millennials. It's about folks that may not really be in their prime charitable giving years. And, and that's actually not the case as we see that those millennials may be the force driving a lot of that behavior. That behavior and those habits are actually bleeding out into many other demographic um, segments. So you really want to keep that in mind as well. And as Tanya said, you know, you're mobile already. Here's that, that stat around um, email opens, and that over 66% of emails are now being opened on a smartphone or tablet. And this is a study done um, earlier this year from Movable Inc. And so again, it, it really s says that and that's not just about your fundraising experience. It's about that entire experience. It's not just about the act of donation. right? It's about every time you're touching those donors. You want them to be able to read your message on whatever device they may be holding at the moment. And so here's just an illustration is that you know, all of these components really build your fundraising strategy. It's not just one touch point. It's not just that one fundraising appeal email. It's not just that donation page. It's every time that you reach out to donors, they're likely doing something with your cause via mobile. And so here we've got social media, email, events, donations. You know, they, they're, I, I'm not sure if we have this stat in our deck today, but I know that a, a large majority of traffic is now being, um, mobile traffic is, is made up of video views. And so video is now being very popular. And we also know that video can be a very, com you know, done well, video can be a very compelling fundraising hook. So getting that story out there. And so just think about how all of these components tie into your mobile fundraising experience. So mobile can keep donors in that moment of giving. As soon as they read that appeal, they're emotionally involved, they're inspired, they're motivated to act, and clicking through and immediately being able to give to your organization right from their phone keeps them in that moment of giving. It keeps them in that spirit of continuity that's going to help you convert them at a higher rate because they don't really have to think about it. They don't have to come back later and fill out a form and, and give from a different channel. And of course, mobile can make giving fast and easy, right? And that's one of the things that we often say in general about online fundraising is that anything that you do online needs to be fast and easy. Because people are busy, people are on the go, and so it's really about speed and convenience. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to do this, but it gets really into the heart of clearing away the clutter and making it as simple as possible. 
I know that when I go onto a site and I can't easily use it on mobile, I'm probably not going to spend very much time there. I'm probably going to try to come back later if, if I do remember to do that, or I'm going to feel really frustrated with the experience, which is not something that we want to convey to the people that we'd like to give back to our causes. And then again, here are some great examples of, of how mobile can you know, underscore or leverage that sense of urgency. So things like disaster giving and things like giving days, you know, those are you know, highly social, highly time-bound events that we want people to give right in that moment, and mobile can help them to do that. And so I'm going to pass it on over to Tanya, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about how you can optimize your donation experience for mobile. Okay, so now you have tons of stats that you can use to go convince the resources inside uh, your company to, um, to get on board. But now I'm going to uh, give you a, a, few, uh, a few tactics that you can implement um, to, to help your, your mobile strategy. First of all, the first thing you need to do is just kind of look at what's happening on your website. Just go to Google Analytics or some of the other analytic tools out there and just do a lay of the land. How many people come to your site? You know, I'm going to kind of just do, do a benchmark of where are they coming from, um, which type of devices, and um, what happens when, when they get to the site. Where exactly are they dropping off? Um, try to find out um, also, it's, and it's not only your site, it's also you know, your emails um, and your, you know, how they use both of these on all your different devices. And one, you know, one big thing is trying to figure out how, there's tools out there that can figure out how long are they in each page, and, 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 and you know, where do they drop off to if, if you can, if you can find that. Uh, one thing that we do here is figure out how long does it take from beginning to end on the payment section of, of obviously that's how we can view a PayPal. So um, you can maybe do that and see how long are they, they spending, how much time they're spending, say, on do, in your donation page or other pages. So set your mobile priorities. So assign someone to focus on mobile, for optimi mobile optimizing in your organization. Have, you know, have them figure out, you know, just have one person figure out how, how to prioritize and what, co what components of your website should be updated. We always suggest the donation page, of course, to be mobile friendly, uh, but you might have other pages that are important, especially your um, home page is another one. And, and just make sure that those couple pages are you know, as simple and clean as possible. So I'll go, I'm going to go into even more details here. Just make sure that um, your load times are really short. They, it's suggested that they should be between three and five seconds. You know, people are sometimes walking, commuting, watching TV, and maybe even texting while hanging on your donation page. You, know, you must make those load times short to keep them there and be able to speed them to donate to the donate page. You know, use the absolute amount minimum of fields if possible. We see that the more fields um, you put in there, the the bigger drop-offs you'll have. Uh, make sure that the buttons are big enough and in easily um, tappable, I guess, on, t on them, but, you know, but also not too big that increases scrolling. That also has a lot of drop-offs if people have to scroll too much, they get frustrated. On the home page and all the main pages there, are, uh, make sure there's donate buttons on the top and bottom. That really works great. And on the, other, and on the donation page itself, if you, if you offer PayPal, not, not only it cuts down dramatically on all the donor uh, data entry, but you also, um, you also get all that donor contact information in the back end uh, for you can, so you can use for future database cultivation. I know that's a really big um, concern for nonprofits and part of the reason why they add so many extra fields to get information. But it, it, for each field, we see it all the time, for each field there's a huge percent drop off. So um, highly recommend um, streamlining as much as you can. A couple more things. Depending um, on your website, you might be able to use auto-populate functionalities. Also, uh, progress bar uh, helps people stay on your site. If they know they are only a few more steps to go to, to give, um, that's really helpful. The biggest hurdle uh, I've seen through the years here at PayPal is, is also forcing both buyers and donors to log into a site. There is just a huge drop-off when they're, when they're forced to, to have some sort of login um, um, you know, action to, to take. If you have login screens, if you, if you have to, and I have seen this in many websites that sort of have to have this login, just make sure you also provide a guest experience for those who just want to, you know, just want to give quickly um, on your site. 
And just as usual, make sure every step of the way is just really, really simple and clean. So one thing that I, I, we see here at PayPal, and this is what we spend a lot of our time doing, is, is looking at abandonment, abandonment rates and abandonment um, reasons why people um, will, will not either buy or give. And there's some interesting similarities, but there's also some differences between drop-off rates uh, of payments on retailers uh, versus nonprofits. You know, when some of the reasons when somebody's going to buy something that the reason they drop off would be because maybe they were just browsing, they just sh window shopping. Um, sometimes when they're about to pay, they just realize the shipping is too expensive or tax, or, or they just figure out maybe it'll be cheaper somewhere else, or maybe they found a coupon from, for some other store. On, um, on nonprofits, it's different. Um, you know, people are going to give not because they're trying to buy something, but because there's an the, there's a emotional connection, right? And it's kind of an impulse um, action to give. Um, so I think, I think it's way more important actually to have mobile optimized pages on nonprofit donation pages because unlike retail where people really are motivated to buy this one thing, with nonprofits um, you have this small little window of opportunity <laughs> or that emotional impulse to pay and to, and to donate. And if you make it frustrating, they're just going to walk away because they're like, well, I tried. I did my best because there's nothing there. Um, additional to, to engage them that, of something that they want back. So that's why I'm a big proponent of you know, making sure that donation flow is really, really simple and fast. And just uh, one more stat. Uh, we've been doing a lot of studies recently, of course, on mobile, and uh, it's really staggering how um, if you have a mobile website or a website that is not mobile optimized, and then you optimize um, that uh, giving or payment flow, we've seen up to 35% increase in, in, in mobile conversion, and that means just payments being completed. Um, for a real retailer, that's a lot of money, and for a nonprofit, uh, is, you know, it can be a huge difference on, the, on, the, on your mission and the impact that you can do if you have 34% more donations come through. So it's just really, really important. I'm going to pass it on now to Karen, who's going to tell us, give us some examples of what's out there and what people are doing. Thanks so much, Tanya. I think those stats are so fascinating, and it's really important to understand. You know, Tanya has such a wealth of information, and it's great because she's able to kind of compare and contrast that um, traditional retail or e-commerce experience with what we're also seeing on, on the nonprofit or the charitable side. And as you know, some of that behavior is, is similar, and some of it is very different. I think some of the behavior is similar, but the motivations are different. So it's really interesting to be able to, to look at that. Um, what I have up here on the screen is, is actually one of our clients at Network for Good, Mothers to Mothers, and they're one of my favorite organizations. And they've done a great job at really thinking through their mobile strategy and understanding how to present a really clean and clear experience through their website, emails, and donation experience. And so what I have on the screen is their homepage. And this is a much different homepage than if you were to go on to their site from a desktop. They've um, altered this quite a bit so that it's streamlined. Um, they're featuring just a few key things that they want you to be able to know or do when you go onto their site from a mobile device. Um, and you'll see that it's pretty stripped down design, but it's clean, it's attractive, it, it really retains a lot of the same um, motifs that you'll see on their site and on their campaign materials. So loved this example from Mothers to Mothers. So it makes it easy to understand and, and take action. And now I want to show you a special campaign page from this same organization. They recently did a, a Mother's Day campaign um, that they called um, Double Your Mommy. And so it was an actually a, a, a matching gift campaign where if you donated, the, your gift would be doubled um, for Mother's Day. And so I really liked this campaign, and I was able to take some screenshots of, of what that experience might look like on, their, um, on your mobile device if it wasn't mobile optimized. And that's there on the left, and that shows the, the kind of traditional desktop experience. Um, and it has a lot more options and some different um, information. And then on the right we have um, kind of the after. So what happens when we do actually take that donation experience and optimize it for a smartphone? And so at Network for Good we've really worked with uh, PayPal to, to optimize this and to provide some auto detection when folks come to your site and they, we see that they're coming from a smartphone. We'll 
pop that up there instead of the desktop site. And then we give them some very clear paths to go down. And when they choose to donate, um, we give them some, some clear payment options, and that includes um, what, exactly what Tanya was talking about. They can still go ahead and give in what, maybe what we would consider a more traditional way by entering their information in their credit or debit card. Or they can choose PayPal and kind of get authorized through PayPal, pulls up all of their details, and there's a little less data entry. And if you've ever tried to do a lot of data entry on your phone, you'll know how um, time consuming and frustrating that can be, and especially if you're like me. I'm not a very fast um, smartphone typer, not like my daughter who is um, a texting machine. So I guess I need to, to practice that. But so this actually reduces a lot of that frustration and friction. And that's really important um, for your donors when they're on the go and you've inspired them to give. So I really love this example. And if you go sign up for some of Mother to Mothers to Mothers emails, you'll see how they've really incorporated that throughout their campaigns. The next slide here just shows kind of the different flows. And it might be a little hard to see here on this screen, um, but you'll get this slide and you can kind of examine these in more detail. And it just shows the different experience that happens when you've chosen to pay by PayPal versus paying by credit card. And of course, if you've ever used PayPal to pay for something, you know how easy that is to just log in to your account, pulls up all your info, and you don't have to choose you know, your um, your you know, expiration dates and all of those things, um, especially if you're trying to recall those from memory and not actually pick your credit card out of your wallet, which I often try to do. So here's another example that I thought was really great, and Tanya and I had a really great um, chat about this because we were just um, in love with this frog, which is, not a, which is not a phrase I thought I would ever say, but um, this frog is very adorable. This is an organization called Save the Frogs, and it's another um, network for good client here. And I pulled this example out because what I wanted to just share is that you don't need a huge budget um, or a, a large um, fundraising team or a, a large tech team to implement a a, a solid mobile fundraising strategy. If you align yourself with the right partners and kind of pick the right technology that fits your organization, um, most often that you will be able to get some of these things already built in. And so um, this is a great example of an organization that is doing a good job, and they've been able to include that image in their um, mobile experience, and that gets back to what Tanya was saying, you know, how are you continuing that emotional impact? Um, and so we're not just allowing that to be quick and easy, but we're also reinforcing um, and evoking that emotional impact that people that are interested in saving the frogs um, probably have with this, uh, this connection with this image here. So another great job. The next example is Feeding America. So I've picked a couple of larger organizations to, sh to show the difference here. And, and this is their home page. And so you see they have positioned here Donate Now at the very top, um, which they're really prioritizing that because they're thinking, well, if folks are coming here from their mobile, they're likely ready to take some sort of action. They were likely probably not researching the cause. They're, they're probably there to do some very specific things. And so they've prioritized that button. Right on top of the page would be very easy to click with your thumb, um, big enough to find it and click easily, but not too big that it's bumping some of the other information off the page. And then the last example I have here is Best Friends Animal Society. Um, and of course they have a very adorable cat here. Um, but what I really loved about this example, and this is also their, home, their mobile home page, um, that they've really started you out by picking that donation amount. And so they're really already getting you on track to make that donation to their organization. And I thought this was a great screen to have as their home page. And then of course you can get into the other aspects of their site. Um, but again, I liked the, um, the image there. And I'm, I really just now noticed that all those three last examples have orange as the um, primary color. I don't know if, if that's a trend, but <laughs> maybe I have a preference for orange. So anyway, that wasn't on purpose, but um, uh, some great examples for you to think about maybe how you might want to position your mobile homepage to your donors and to your um, constituents. And so I'm going to hand it back over to Tanya, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about the full spectrum of mobile. We've really focused more on the mobile web and the mobile donation experience, but she has a great vantage point at PayPal for some of the emerging technologies. Thank you, Karen. And I just want to add to what she was just talking about and all, all these great examples from Network for Good. Um, and, and, and just driving home the, the, the idea that 
you can partner with a lot of uh, technology, fundraising technologies out there, whether it's Net for Good or PayPal or other platforms out there. We'd rather you use us, but there's many others who who have um, are really dedicated to to improving um, the experience, and it's just, it's you can leverage them, and um, there's not. You don't have to do all this integration if you don't have the resources. But I want to move on just to, um, we have a few more minutes, and I just want to see kind of big picture what's happening out there. And I think this is what's super exciting. Um, and it's, it's what's coming up? What's in the future? And there's so much happening out there. Um, great technology being uh, ideated, and um, a lot of it around um, events in particular. You know, how do you collect payments at events, whether it's you know, little card swipers, or um, you know, we here at PayPal now we have this thing called check-in, where people can find um, what's in the, in the vicinity area and uh, pay or donate in, in, a, in a case of a charity. And there's many other things coming out there. And um, the question is, how how is this? You know, it's all being built mainly for retail, but how is this going to um, sort of pan out for nonprofits? And how I'm just super excited to see how nonprofits are going to start using this, and and how it's going to um, really help in what you know, kind of creative ways we can use this, this new, new um, mobile technology for, uh, for fundraising. So um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I think you get the idea of what's happening out there. And then now I think we're just going to go to the Q&A section of, of, of the webinar. Um, again, thank you so much for being here in case I don't have time to uh, tell you again. It's been, been really a pleasure to be here, and I really, really hope that um, you've been able to learn something. So Becky, do you want to go to the next round and see um, where, where we can start with the questions? Absolutely. Thank you both so much for that. Really interesting information. And you know, one of the questions that came up in our room here with the, the people who are running this was when you mentioned uh, the, it was $5.7 billion was the B uh, dollars that was processed for nonprofits yep. last year. Is that correct? Is that yeah. just in the U.S. or is that worldwide? Uh, that's the U.S. and Canada. That's North America, and we're expecting around wow. seven billion this year. Yeah, we have 400, over 400,000 nonprofits uh, using PayPal that's one huge. way or another. Yeah, and so yeah. We, we we get to have this awesome insight of what's happening out there. And um, right, we, so that that's a lot of flow of money <laughs> for the yeah, nonprofit you know, sector coming through. So that's amazing. You know what? But what's interesting is, and this is something Karen and I were, were talking about. We're we're in the middle of writing a white paper. We're almost done with it on mobile, and we're looking for samples. And so, and of course, in every day, I'm look, I'm constantly testing um, donation flows on people's uh, nonprofits' website, and it's it's amazing how many are not updated. So it's almost heartbreaking because I know the numbers and I know how much more impact and donations can go through if you optimize. And so. Um, Hopefully that's why we're here, and hopefully motivate some people to, to be able to um, get some ideas on how to improve the payment. So, yeah. Just, that's you great. Have yeah. Um, yeah. There are some other questions. We've got a bunch here stacked up, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started on those. So Gwendolyn asks, should our nonprofit have a PayPal account connected to our website? And with that, does the link that takes people to PayPal is it already going to be mobile optimized on PayPal's end? Great question. Yes. So if um, when you sign up for people, we have many products. We have really simple uh, ways that you can fundraise with a say HTML donate button, which is um, you've probably seen it out there. It's the most common button out there, and it's just a cut and paste HTML, super easy. Um, or you can also get our higher end API uh, products that can do a lot more things. And in both cases, in all cases actually, they all maybe mobile optimized. Yeah. So when somebody goes pay, that, the second that you get routed from that button. The next screen you're going to see is very much mobile optimized. All you have to do is enter your uh, – the donor has to just enter their um, email address and um, log in, and then pay with PayPal quickly. Or we also have a guest checkout um, where if you don't have a PayPal account, you can pay with credit card. But we've created the fields really, really simple for mobile. So it's also mobile optimized for those who don't have a PayPal account. Great. Thanks for that. Um, and we had a question actually for Karen asking, you know, so is this interva interface only possible if you are part of Network for Good? And I think this was on these slides where you are sharing some examples. So are these types of interfaces only available through Network for Good, or can you use any number of 
platforms sure. to help you create this? No, definitely. So, I mean, the, the examples that I showed, the first few examples there are examples um, from the Network for Good platform using the Donate Now product. So that's the customizable donation page that you can you can add different options to, and we provide a lot of other tools for you to use. So definitely, you know, if you are um, going through Network for Good, this is part of um, everyone that has Donate Now. Um, but to Tanya's point too, you know, there are other services out there that that do provide some similar um, opportunity because everyone really understands the, the need to be mobile optimized. And so you want to really pick a partner um, or a fundraising provider that's going to have done a lot of that heavy tech lifting for you, you so that you don't have to kind of go back in and try to figure out how to create that mobile experience on your own um, because that would be quite an undertaking. That's great. And you know, I think that speaks to the point that there are a lot of tools out there. And one of the things that I know confuses a lot of users is a question that we have from Dave who is asking, um, can you speak a little bit about costs? And so when you are looking for a, a vendor or a tool to use, for example, that might be processing your online donations, um, what should they be looking for in regards to costs around transactions? So each credit card transaction is you know, is there a fee associated, and what's the percentage, or is it, you know, can you explain a little bit of that? And this might get a little bit wonky, but this is a great <laughs> way to compare um, I, I, when you're looking for a mobile vendor. So maybe yeah, this is I, one for Tanya. I could start with that, and then uh, uh, Karen can also fill in on her side. Um, with PayPal, you basically pay for the most part. You pay um, transaction fees, just like if you're using Mastercard or Visa card, you have to give a percentage to them, and so. Um, we're just sort of the in-between folks um, between the credit card companies. And um, so there's a, usually um, for regular business on our basic products, it's 2.9% uh, plus 30 cents a transaction. But for nonprofits, we have a discount, and it's 2.2% plus 30 cents a transaction with a mobile, with a donate button, the regular HTML button, or actually in some of the APIs as well. Now we also have even higher-end accounts that you can have, business accounts uh, called Pro, Website Payments Pro, and that there's a monthly fee. But you get a, a, a really long list of other uh, capabilities and more control of what, what you're doing. So, and then when a partner integrates PayPal into their platform like Network for Good or many others, then they will usually add also fees on top depending on what it is, especially crowdfunding companies. You can see um, total will be somewhere with PayPal fields. You'll be anywhere between like 5 and 9%. Um, depending on who you choose. Um, Karen, do you have any insights? On, on yeah, that? no, I think that's great. In, that's great info, Tanya. And I think that Tanya brings up a couple of things that are important when you're when you're thinking about anything in terms of donation processing, but also in terms of mobile in particular. I think it's you know what are you getting for for what you're spending, and and how much mobile fundraising do you expect to do, or how much online fundraising do you expect to do, and kind of calculate what's the ROI on on the investment that you have. And so, and Network for Good, we do have a um, you know a monthly subscription fee which pays for your customized donation page, all the hosting, all the security, um, as well as support and um, some uh, really hands-on training in terms of onboarding, getting your page set up, um, optimizing that, and taking advantage of some of our internal experts. Um, and then there is a um, the transaction fee. And a transaction fee for anyone that's on the Donate Now platform is a 3% flat fee. Um, and we don't have a, an additional per transaction um, Fee. And so I think those are some of the things to think about. You know, what are all the different cost structures out there? What are you getting for that? Um, and so sometimes it might be a, a monthly subscription fee or an annual contract or whatever that may be. There will always be typically that transaction fee um, that covers the credit card processing, and that's kind of just the cost of doing business in the world today. And then some some um, platforms do have that um, you know per transaction one-off fee. So I think those are some things to think about and to think about how that fits into your budget. Think about how that fits into your overall strategy to see um, you know, how, how are you going to use that. You know, how, much, how many problems does it solve for you and what's that worth, I think. That's helpful. And you know, one rule of thumb is to look at the fundraising that you're doing currently uh, in your organization. If you're getting maybe a handful of really big lump donations that are large in size, so you have 10 donors that give you $5,000 at your annual event, um, you may want to opt for a different uh, fee structure account than somebody who processes $2,000 $5 donations 
because you might find that there is a big difference in the cost to you based on what that fee structure is. So it really helps I think to evaluate the types of donations that you are getting individually at your organization and then decide based on that which is going to be the most bang for your buck. Um, we have a lot of other questions about the platforms. So uh, you know, Kathy asks, you know, they use PayPal to accept donations already, and is there a way to get one-on-one -on -one help to make the interface better? And kind of in conjunction with that, uh, Pervy asks, uh, you know, is there a way, can we customize our donation page on PayPal to, to, to say which amounts you know, which denominations you want to allow people to donate in. So if you want to have a $5 and a $29 option or something, can you customize those fields? So those are both uh, mm -hmm. for Tanya. Yes. Uh, it depends on the, um, which this is a very long, <laughs> long, it could be a very long answer. It depends on the product. But yes, you can customize um, how. You can either do, like for instance with a, the, the WPS, the, the website payment standard, which is just the HTML button. You can either get a fix in the back end. You can just select a particular amount, say it's twenty dollars. Say there's a registration fee, right, for your event. You can just set that up as one number, or you can make it open so people can type in whatever they want, or even have options. And you can also use different buttons if you just want to use a simple button that has twenty here, and then a different part of your website for something else is you know fifty dollars. You can also designate um, and have you know multiple buttons if you like. The higher end products that we have, the APIs, you can really customize and do a lot, a lot of more customization with that. And also, um, it also depends if you're using a third-party vendor um, like Network for Good or some of the others, where depending how you integrate, how it's integrated, there'll be you know the experience of drop downs or radio buttons will be different on, on what you can choose. So it really, it's honestly, it's the, the options are out there. Um, the question is how how do you want to use it and which very specific tool you want to use. But yes, the options are out there to do that. Great. Let's switch gears a little bit to answer some questions about websites. So uh, Norman asks, um, if you are getting a new website designed, or if you are redesigning your existing site, would you, re would you recommend that people opt for responsive design, which is you know, the type of site that knows that you are on a desktop, or knows that you are on a tablet, or knows that you are on a phone, and responds to those different designs automatically and shifts the page around. Would you recommend those? That's for either of you to answer. I would say yes. I mean, I think you want to really think about how do you get the most bang for your technology buck, right? And I think if you're using systems that already offer um, responsive templates and designs, thinking about how you're building in a mobile-friendly um, a mobile friendly experience automatically as you're building the rest of your experience, whether those folks are on a desktop, tablet, or mobile, I think you really want to think about that. I don't think at this point it's it's optional. But the great thing is is just just like um the, the folks that are offering online donation processing and fundraising tools like Network for Good, PayPal, other folks, there are a lot of um you know web development shops out there and and CMSs and platforms that are, are offering a lot of the same thing. There's they're really building a lot of that into their platforms. Great. And yeah, I think if anybody uh, does a Google search for responsive design uh, websites or templates, a lot of different options will come up there. And Robert is asking, are there any suggestions or frameworks that you recommend for building mobile optimized websites? So if you're a st small nonprofit and don't have a lot of budget and you need to do it yourself, can you use WordPress or Joomla? Or do you have recommendations for any tools that they might look to to start? Um, I mean, I, I think that you know, again, most of the, the bigger folks that are going to offer some of those pre-packaged templates are going to have some mobile responsive ones to choose from, and so you want to keep an eye out for those. I think that you can definitely do it on a budget. I think it also has to do with a lot of the concepts that we talked about today in terms of optimizing that whole experience. There are just certain philosophies when it comes to mobile that actually will benefit you across the board. So thinking about things like clearing out the clutter, offering very clear and strong calls to actions, reducing the number of things that you're asking anyone to do at any given time, you know, those are definitely things that will benefit you, you know, when you think about putting your page together for mobile, but will actually benefit you across the board, whether they are on a desktop, tablet, or a mobile device. Great. We also have um, you know, uh, somebody asking you know, how many steps in that mobile process. So if you are on 
your mobile device and you decide you want to donate, uh, some of the examples that we saw had four or five or six different screens that needed to be completed in order to finish that transaction. Do you know if there's a best practice around that of how many screens uh, people may have to go through um, or that's ideal so that you don't see that drop off in the process? Yeah, I mean, Tanya might have some different um, information on that. I think that you know you definitely want to reduce the number of screens. I think that we, what we showed is the complete set, and so that includes the first page you hit all the way to the confirmation page. Um, and I think it's also about the number of um, things that you do on those screens as well as what you're asking them to. So how easy is it to burn through those? And what we found is that it, you know, it can take about a minute or less to, to complete that whole process. And so um, you know, point taken that, that, that those screens might look a, a little um, much um, on the, the workflow that I posted. Um, but Tanya, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, some of our products is just like three screens. So basically it depends how you integrate, but if you have say a PayPal button, if you're going to do the, um, somebody's paying with well, actual PayPal, so there's click the Donate button, then you log in, and then you go into your account, and basically you confirm. I mean, it can be really fast. And in fact, um, this is not a tool you see often out there, but some of our developers, when they use a specific de developer API from PayPal, there's a way that you can check a, a checkbox if you're a PayPal user, and every time um, you log in, it completes, it sort of recognizes you, and you can complete the payment, and you sort of give it that um, sort of permission. Um, so that's out there. It's not widely used, but it's out there, and I think it, probably in the future there will be more of that. We now have also, um, this is interesting, but when you, we have various ways where you can check in with your PayPal app. So let's say you have your your regular, if you're a donor, and you have PayPal on your phone, a little app to pay. Um, there's going to be, st there's actually many stores now where you can um, check in and basically just w swipe just with one, one uh, stroke the, uh, that you're checking into that store. And you're basically giving them permission to, um, to bill you whatever the amount is when you're at the register. Um, or you can also you know, pay ahead and also just do one swipe. And it's already, because you're already in your PayPal account and you're logged in, that's all you have to do, one swipe, you're done. And, that, um, and that's happening more in retail, but uh, I, I can foresee a lot of nonprofits starting to use that for their events. And so, I mean, that's the ultimate, right? When you just walk in, you can check in, and that's it, you're done. Um, online it takes right now a few more steps, you know, to like three, three screens, but the, the shorter you can make it, the better, of course. And that is a good moral to this story. <laughs> Before we go ahead and wrap up here, since we're almost at the top of the hour, I want to just take a moment and talk a little bit about Better World Wireless, which is one of the providers here that's co-sponsoring this series of events. Um, and they offer a donation program through TechSoup that provides access to discounted mobile services and devices. So if you're looking for devices, definitely check out the Better World Wireless program. And if you are looking for a service for your organization, wireless service, they can help connect you to discounted rates. Additionally, we have some other mo mobile programs in our catalog. Uh, there were a couple of folks that asked about text to give plans and different offers that are out there. connect to give does offer mobile marketing and donation services as well as website optimized for mobile. Um, so does Guide by Cell, which offers mobile optimized website design services. Pay Anywhere has one of those little card swipers that you can attach to your phone uh, to allow you to process payments if you're out at a, an in-person event or fundraiser. Uh, CDI, which is one of our donation programs, offers recertified tablets. So if you're looking for devices for your organization, that's a great place to look. And Mobile Beacon offers mobile broadband and hotspots. So if you need access to the web while you're on the go or at an event, um, they can hook you up with that. So definitely check out those programs. Additionally, as we wrap up, I want to let you know about some upcoming webinars. So we have we hold these webinars usually once a week on Thursdays at 11 Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. So all of these are on on those dates except for July 1st which is a Tuesday since we have a holiday that week. So join us if you are interested in learning more about Tumblr for social good. Uh, if you are a faith-based or a religious organization, join us on July 1st to learn about the different offers that are available to your organization. And you can learn more about Mobile Tech for Offices and People which is that Part 4 of this webinar series 
Additionally, if you are from a library today, we will be running a series of mobile webinars starting in July and running through August where we will have three webinars that are specifically on how to serve your patrons and to, um, to enable your patrons to use mobile devices in your library as well. So that one is going to be targeted for that community. Thank you so much to Tanya and Karen for your wonderful presentations and for taking time to answer your questions today. I know we didn't get through all of your questions, but know that we will be including links to some of the resources in our follow-up email that you will receive later this afternoon. So for those of you who want to know more about mobile optimized websites, we will send a link to the webinar we did last year that was just on that topic, and we will include links to a number of other things. Thank you also to Allie and Dave on our end for helping in the back end to respond to chat questions. And lastly, thank you to ReadyTalk, our webinar platform, for providing the use of this tool for us to present these webinars to you on a weekly basis. Uh, feel free once you leave this webinar to complete the pop-up post-event survey that will open up in a new tab on your browser to let us know how we did today so we can continue to improve our webinar programming. Thank you so much everybody. Have a terrific day. Bye-bye.